Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's so great to have everybody back with us today. And uh, here we are again with Dr. Liz Lister. Um, how are you doing, Dr. Liz? Doing great, thanks. How are you? Great. Dr. Liz, it's that time of year, at least down here it is for us, uh, when all the, the weeds come out and um, my wife and I start sneezing. In fact, it's interesting, I, I'm not sure of this, but I think we start sneezing before the weeds come out, before the pollen gets really gets out there. We, we notice it. And mm -hmm. then I notice like a week later, all of a sudden we've got to go out and start weeding the garden or the, the lawn or whatever it is. Um, and I've had, I've probably been, uh, my mother used to say, oh, well, you're allergic, meaning mm -hmm. you have a proclivity to get allergic to almost anything. I don't know that that was true, but I, I do have always had hay fever. Um, and I wonder how many people get a serious allergy? Oh, that's a very interesting question. So most people don't have a true, complete allergy, like you're saying. Okay, like the worst case, which is a different immune reaction than the seasonal allergies. Okay, so for example, if somebody eats a bite of shellfish or something that they're truly allergic to and they're, they can't breathe, okay, that's what I call an allergy or, a, or an exposure to a particular antibiotic. When people say they're allergic to it, we want to really be 100% sure that we avoid it versus what you were talking about in your garden. So seasonal allergies, it's funny because the seasons kind of blur into each other a little bit at this sure. point in the world's development. You know, now we're in late winter, early spring, and what you're describing is usually the tree or these types of pollens from plants right. that are starting to be in the air. And people have a sensitivity that affects the airway, the eyes, the nose, the throat. That's more the seasonal allergy so it's not the full-on, true allergic reaction. That's a good distinction that you point out. Yeah, that's interesting because um, when my mother said you're allergic, you are an allergic. Like I'm a person who's going to be allergic to everything. Um, and that really hasn't proven to be true. I, as a kid, right. I was allergic to penicillin. That's what they tell me. Now, I don't remember any of that. Um, but when they when I go to the doctors and say, "Are you have any allergies?" I say penicillin. I don't say hay fever. I say, "Yeah, I'm allergic to penicillin." Right. On the other hand, I must have grown out of that allergy because I know over the years I've had antibiotics or whatever you call them that have a penicillin base that yeah. you know have some relationship to penicillin. So whether the medicines got better or I grew out of it at, I don't know, teenage years, um, things did change for me. And I wondered if people, can you grow out of an allergy? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to say that, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I had yeah. an allergy where my eyes watered all the time and I was taking something called, uh, maybe somebody in our audience, uh, had the same thing, parabenzamine. Uh, it was this, uh, greenish blue, uh, after a while you get used to it, but like beer. <laughs> but it, it was probably god awful uh, taste. Uh, but then, by the time I turned eleven or twelve, I totally grew out of it, and I haven't had an allergy since. So maybe you could address some of that. Do do we grow out of them? Uh, um, why are more some people more susceptible? Absolutely. There's a lot of things that influence our general state of health, our age, our hormone status. You know, if something comes on when we reach puberty, then, of course, hormones are affecting it. If it gets better as we get older, no question, things can change as we get older. And just our anatomy changes. Okay, so as you mentioned, you've both talked about watery eyes, dripping nose, sneezing, uh, itchiness in the throat, that those types of symptoms, when we're smaller, those membranes can be more exposed. It can take less of the pollen, for example, to cause symptoms versus when we get older, there's just a larger airway for that to kind of affect. Mm -hmm. And that can definitely make us be able to uh, grow out of these types of allergies or sensitivities 
uh, as we get older. So definitely things can change. Can you for just sure. a general general uh, rule, if there is such a thing for uh, when is an allergy okay? I go to over the counter versus mm -hmm. go to a, a medical professional. That's an excellent question. It's really just a degree of severity of your symptoms. If you have mild symptoms, you can use nasal sprays, like just a saline spray that has no medication in it whatsoever. You can use an antihistamine, you can use a decongestant, you can treat the specific symptom itself. There's a lot of over-the-counter medicines that are combinations of those different uh, ingredients that we were just saying. Also, there are supplements, there are herbal uh, ingredients that can be helpful. Uh, quercetin is one that a lot of people are hearing about now. It actually has been researched and shown to stabilize the inflammation response. Okay, just the way some of these medications do. There's also glutathione, which makes the mucus secretions not as thick. So that relieves symptoms. Let's see, vitamin C is anti-inflammation. And another one, I just like the name, it's called stinging nettles. Oh, Stinging mm. nettles is an herbal ingredient that you're going to find in a lot of natural antihistamine, anti-inflammation supplements. Lots of ways to treat it. And if all of those are not doing the trick, then you go to your doctor and they can give you something a little bit stronger, might have an ingredient that's by prescription, such as a steroid, as in a nasal spray with a steroid in it, something like that, if it gets to that point. Yeah. Stinging nettles are uh, a very nasty weed. We have them all over. Every spring we get them and I, we, we try to get rid of them. But I do know that uh, particularly Asian uh, cultures love to take the stinging nettle. And of course, it, it really does sting if you touch it. It's a nasty feeling um, that you can't get rid of for quite a while. But they love to take it and boil it and make tea out of it. And I, mm -hmm. I guess they do other things with it because it has medicinal properties. So absolutely. Um, for me, I just want to stomp it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dr. Liz, this has, been, this has been interesting because um, the seasonal allergies are so common. Uh, obviously, there are shelves on in every store with over-the-counter medicines mm -hmm. for, for these kinds of uh, uh, reactions that we get. But you also mentioned... Um, the more serious allergy, uh, let's say an allergy to um, a, a medicine of some or, sort. Or, or peanut butter. We, we hear about all those kind of things. Right. Peanut, right. Allergies. Right. peanut allergies, yeah. yeah. So uh, I get the impression that those allergies, let's say, take as an example, allergy, being allergic to peanuts or something like that, those allergies really don't just come out of nowhere. You're, you're, they're kind of part of you. Uh, they're not developed, or, or am I wrong? Can you well, develop not, an allergy? They're not seasonal. They, they're with you all the time. Right, but I guess what I'm getting at is, are they? can you get them in the middle of the life, in, in midlife? All of a sudden, you've never been allergic to peanuts, peanuts, and now you are. Is that? It's very unusual to develop later in life that kind of, complete allergy with what we call an anaphylactic response, where throat closes up, can't mm. breathe, that type of severe allergy. In my career as a doctor, I have really never observed that coming about. I mean, I can never say never in my line of work. However, I really haven't seen that come about uh, in later years. What I see all the time is the development of sensitivities which is not the full allergy reaction, but a sensitivity, for example, to certain kinds of foods or even to alcohol, or it can be dairy, it can be gluten. These kinds of sensitivities can develop as time goes by and our hormone levels change as we get older and this affects the immune system. That I see all the time. Good distinction. Uh, important distinction, I think. It's yeah. been very, very informative. Um, thank you. Now, pardon me while I go sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Dr. Liz, it's great to see you again. Thanks for all this wonderful information. We'll see you soon. 
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.